Now, you will probably recognize this man here. He is the late film director, Michael Winner. Here he is with his wife, Geraldine, on their wedding day back in 2011. They'd known each other for over 50 years before they finally tied the knot. But sadly, the marriage was short-lived, with Michael passing away just two short years later. Well, following his death, Geraldine, who's now 77, subsequently downsized from their mansion to a flat in Knightsbridge in London. I was in terrible pain. My back was agony and my shoulder was agony. You can't believe it. You think, this isn't happening. It's just not true. It's just, I don't believe it. Now, this is 70 mil, and I'm opening something. I know what it is. <laughs> Michael Winner was 75 when he finally married four years ago. But his wife, Geraldine, had known him for a very long time before the wedding. I met him when I was 16, and I've known him ever since. So that was like, you know, 56 years. But their marriage was tragically brief. Michael died less than two years later. Our life together was fun. He had the most fantastic sense of humour. Underneath all his bluff, he was the most exuberant, incredible person ever. He was just like a little pussycat, you know. And what I had with him is just wonderful. It's just wonderful. Since her husband's death, Geraldine has lived alone. On Friday, the 9th of October, she was getting ready to go and visit her two sons. I finished packing because I was going to Paris the next day. Thinking of all the different things I had to do. I'd been to the bank, actually, to get some extra money, get some extra euros out. I'd managed to organise everything. I was all calm and settled, and I just literally had to get into bed, go to sleep, and get up the next morning. Shortly after 10 p.m., Geraldine was about to turn in for the night. I saw there were a few newspapers, so I thought, oh, I'll just put those outside the back door. Opened the door, and then all hell broke loose. You can't believe it. You think, this isn't happening. It's just not true. It's just, I don't believe it. I went to grab her hair to bash her if I could, and it was a wig, came off in my hand. But I was fighting. I was petrified, but at the same time, I was, you know, I wanted to get rid of her. I went to grab the kettle to hit her with the kettle, and then she grabbed it out of my hand and hit me on the head. She hit me so hard, I saw stars. But I had curlers in my hand, rollers, and I think that saved my head, but she caught hold of my forehead twice, and that's when it started to bleed. And that's when I thought, right, I better stop fighting now because I couldn't end up dead. She hits me harder. While Geraldine lay helpless on the floor, her attacker made sure she wouldn't cry for help. She put her foot on my back pressed very hard and said, shut up, don't make any noise, otherwise I'll kill you. She said, I'll knife you, actually, that's what she said. Was, I'll knife you. Geraldine's hands and feet were bound with cable ties. And then she was blindfolded. For the next three hours, Geraldine lay there, while the intruder meticulously cherry-picked her way through the apartment. But she asked precisely for money and the jewellery. I told her where the money was, the money that I was taking to Paris. 
I kept hearing her zip up this bag. She obviously had a bag that she was putting everything in. And I heard her zipping that up from time to time and unzipping and zipping. With my hands behind my back, yeah, I was in terrible pain. My back was agony and my shoulder was agony. And I'd broken my finger. I saw my finger was broken. I'd seen that. You just, all you want is for her to take what she wants to go. Just go. Just leave me alone. Go. But the ordeal wasn't over yet. She suddenly asked for a specific piece of jewellery, which was in the shape of a heart. So I gave her the number of the safe, of course. It was a little heart that Michael bought for me. You know, well, nearly all the, that jewellery, the monetary value was not what counted. What counted was the memory of it, the, the, the sentimental that it was Michael that bought it for me. It was after one in the morning before the burglar finally made her exit, trying to remove all evidence of her identity as she left. The attack has left its mark on Geraldine. I feel vulnerable. It's just made me realize that there are really evil people in the world. It's the trauma of what's happened to you if I wake up in the middle of the night and a terrified somebody's going to hit me on the head again. I now need somebody in the spare room. That's all there is to it. My memories with Michael and everything I've done with Michael, nobody can take that away. And that's all really that matters. And Michael would just be turning in his grave. He would just be turning in his grave. Terrible. Well, we're joined now by the officer who's leading this investigation, who many of you may well recognise as DCI, Jane Corrigan, a long-standing friend of the programme, and we welcome you back tonight. Um, vicious, calculating, very worrying. Kirsty, this was a horrendous attack that lasted for three hours. Mrs Winner is a really strong lady, but actually this attack has really taken its toll. But we should let people at home know that the security arrangements in Geraldine's flat have now been completely changed. I mean, so unusual, surely, that this was a woman? I've never encountered an attack where a lone female has, one, committed such a vicious offence, but also I can't understand what the motive is behind this attack. Um, you have got, Jane, some uh, it's interesting, highly relevant CCTV. Let's take a look at it. Just explain to us what we're, we're taking a look at. So this is the woman, and we can see that she's in a disguise. So walking down the street, she's wearing a wig and a floppy hat. But we know when their wig was removed, she actually had short, strawberry blonde hair. She's about five foot seven, white, and is described as having an Eastern European accent. So that's how she looked when she was out on the streets of Knightsbridge. Tell us where she went. Well, she's actually um, taken quite a long route to get to the address, and right. she spent hours there. So we know she's entered the pre premises about half past seven on the night, and when she's left about quarter past one in the morning, she's taken this long route all the way to Kensington High Street. So we know that she was there for a good long time and helping herself to a good lot of stuff. Take us through the sort of, I suppose, the most distinctive or significant items she took. Well, she's asked for the heart-shaped pendant. We don't yes. know why she's asked for that but she, the attacker might have kept it, or maybe you've seen her wear it, or maybe she's tried to sell it on. There was also a, a diamond-encrusted Cartier watch oh. uh, with a, a nice uh, bracelet, and we also had some earrings, again, diamond earrings, uh, anchor-shaped. I mean, these are all very beautiful, but we, we saw there in the reconstruction something she took which wasn't particularly val valuable and not that beautiful. Yeah, the kettle. And yeah. again, that might be something, because it's large, she's tried to dispose of it quickly. So maybe one of the street cleaner has maybe found it in a bin. Uh, Jane, it's worth viewers knowing tonight there's a, I mean, a whacking reward here. There is. We've got a £10,000 reward leading to an arrest and prosecution of this woman. OK, DCI Jane Corrigan, thank you so much for updating us on this case. Really a, a horrific ordeal for Geraldine, especially after uh, losing her husband Michael so recently. So if you can help... I would urge you, please, to call us now. It's the usual number, 0500 600 600. Detectives are standing by for your calls.